You're listening to Podcateers. Welcome to episode 403 of Podcateers. This week, Andrew and I talk about some fun mail we received and how it's connected to this year's D23 Expo. We talk about the new ad-based tier that's coming to Disney+, and the announcement of a new Muppet show coming to the streaming service. The Mickey floral that you see as you enter Disneyland made history this week as it became Floral Mini, and a local Bay Area artist has found a creative way to showcase her skills as she tries to get a job at Pixar. We'd love to hear your thoughts on anything we talked about in this episode. You can join the conversation over on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Just search for Podcateers. But we'd love for you to join us on our Discord server. Joining the community is super simple. You can just head on over to podcateers.com slash 403 and click on the Discord logo. Or you can click on the link in our pinned IG story. March Mayhem has officially started, and this year we're putting Disney snacks up against each other, so make sure that you join us on Instagram Monday through Friday to vote for your favorites. A special thank you goes out to an awesome group of people known as the FGP Squad, our podcast fairy godparents, because it's their support via Patreon that help make these episodes of Podcateers possible. As part of the FGP Squad family, you get some additional perks like exclusive discount codes for Podcateers gear, additional content like the Podcateers after show, and access to our happy hour calls, just to name a few. For more info on how you can become part of the FGP Squad family, we invite you to check out podcateers.com slash FGP. And as always, a super special thank you goes out to the FGP squad for their continued support. So we are going to get this podcast rolling. If you are joining us for the first time, thanks for hanging out. We hope that you enjoy the episode and that you keep coming back to join us for more. And if you've been hanging with us for some time, welcome back. Here is episode 403 of Podcateers. It sounded great. <laughs> yeah. I clapped really loud. <laughs> See. Usually I try to go real quiet, but that was kind of a loud one. <laughs> it worked out. Yay. How's everybody doing? Good, good. Yeah? Yep. So, uh, you know, look, you would think that that I would be used to this by now, that, you know, we, we talk about something and like, hey, blah, blah, blah is happening and... Hey, this is coming. Maybe you should try this. And then the very next day, the company says, hold on a second. Because, you know, in the last episode, we were talking about some of the Marvel shows that were being taken off Netflix. And we're thinking like, well, maybe look at Hulu. But hey, you know what? Where they are going, they're going to Netflix in Canada. And so... Oh, Disney Plus, right. <laughs> They're going to Disney Plus in Canada. And so we thought, you know, that, that's great. And and at that moment, we thought to ourselves, well, if you don't happen to live in Canada, well, then just, yeah, just use a VPN or something, right? right. We're not here mm-hmm. to tell you to do that. But look, if you happen to open up a VPN, blah, 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 you were there. You were there. The very next day, right after we record this that episode, there's an announcement by the Disney company that all the shows are coming to Disney plus in the U S as well. So no VPN needed. Now look, look, I'm happy about this announcement. Okay. I love this because I wanted those shows to live on Disney plus. And that's, I'd, I even figured that at some point they would come. Maybe their contracts had to expire. Maybe something was preventing that from happening, but really the next day, really, <laughs> Really? The next day? I wonder what they're going to tell us tomorrow. (laughs) All right. (laughs) I mean, I don't think we have anything that we're talking about today where that would happen. But let's make something up. Right? Oh, let's make up something (laughs) good. Um, Reservations are going away. Done. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So yeah. Fast Pass is coming back, people. You got it. <laughs> oh, that, Forget that's about Disney Genie Gosh, Plus. Gosh, is that too soon? <laughs> 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 it's like you said that. It's like, oh, I remember that. My heart. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so yeah, it was one of those moments where 
I mean, it happens quite frequently. Where as I was editing the episode, I thought to myself, should I just jump in here, like do a quick edit and say, hey, we know that by the time you're hearing this, they already announced it. And yeah, we look like fools announcing this like a day after that it's not happening, that it is happening. But I guess that happens, right? It's just part mm-hmm. of the news cycle. It's just funny to me how so many of these coincidences keep happening. <laughs> it's like we're uh, bugged or something. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe this gift that said, this is not a microphone recording your every single word. Uh, maybe <laughs> I should think on, twice about please it. Please keep on person at all times. Yeah. Maybe I should think <laughs> twice about it. Hmm. Uh, so, hey, I I got some cool mail this week. I, I wanted to open this on camera. As a matter of fact, it's in a brown box. Obviously, that's how things get shipped to you. And I want to get your authentic reaction to this because I just, when I saw this, it's one of those deals that pop up. You know, Amazon, Best Buy, like all these major retailers always have these like lightning deals, right? Where mm-hmm. 12 hours to get this item and it's at a crazy discounted rate, like half off sometimes. That was the case for this item uh my buddy at work ross shout out to my buddy ross he's like hey you gotta check out the best buy daily deal today so i log on to my app i check it out and i was like (laughs) verbatim wait can you i my headphones cut out could you do that again (laughs) yeah absolutely ready I thought okay. we got a got supported by Jurassic World right now. Right. <laughs> yeah. The Velociraptor is just uh, all up in my business over here. So, yeah, so I got I got the item. Uh, did I need it? No. But did I need it because it's awesome? Absolutely. And that's what happened. So I'm going to open this box in front of you. Now, the actual product I'm going to open on an after show. We're going to record it as part of the after show because I want to show it to people and I want to show everybody what it's about. But check this out. All right. So I'm going to grab the trusty the uh, box opener utensil here. I'm not going to grab the fork. I did grab a fork. (laughs) It's a dingle hopper. And we can't even see anything. So it's like we're we're kind of like, what's in the box? Like, what is it? What's in the box? (laughs) Right. You guys ready? Yep, All okay. Right. Oh, the yeah. is broken. Blah, 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 blah. Everything's right. below camera. Here it goes. Right. Here it goes. <laughs> taking it out of the box. Uh-huh. A toothbrush. Oh. Yes, but what is on the box, oh. Andrew? <laughs> it's a toothbrush. No, it's Iron Man toothbrush. It's yes. Oh, slick. Iron Sonic Man toothbrush. Whoa. It is signed by is Tony pretty. Stark on the side. Just the boxing alone is yeah. all graphic. It is Sweet. amazing. <laughs> it is Shoot. the Tony Stark limited edition Evo IRMI rechargeable Sonic toothbrush. Now, look, about a year and a half ago, as I was working towards getting the Invisalign and everything, my dentist said to me, hey, you know, you should get an electric toothbrush. They're much better than a standard toothbrush. And I said, okay, sounds good. Went to Costco and they had a really great deal. Like got some for my wife, you know, that two pack and everything. Got some for the boys and everything. And I, I'm happy. I like my, I have a really great toothbrush. So did I need this? No. <laughs> <laughs> did I want it? Oh, yes. <laughs> like, I saw it, and my jaw dropped. I'm like, I don't know if I could ever use this because I feel like getting it dirty is horrible. And so I even joked with Ross about how if I got the toothbrush, that I don't know if I could use the actual toothbrush head for this one because it's a limited edition. It's like the red armor and mm-hmm. I don't know if they're ever going to stop making those for the first year or so since they just released it. Yeah, it's going to be readily available. But I think I might just buy the white toothbrush heads because I think it's compatible with the ones I already have. Okay. But I guess I'll be able to test that once we actually open it. But the idea is to use, if I use it, it might just become a like a display piece. <laughs> um, 
Here's Iron Man's mask, and here's the <laughs> here's his toothbrush. Here's his toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. I mean, look, my my current toothbrush works absolutely fine. This was one of those purchases where I'm just such a huge fan that I mean, who needs an Iron Man toothbrush? This guy. <laughs> Is does it, it gonna clean my teeth? And I don't know what it does, honestly. Oh, that's man. why I want to do. Good question, Melissa. <laughs> yeah, I'm just curious. Like know... each stroke, does it? Have sound? Oh my god! Tony if... Stark like <laughs> counts you down as you're... yeah. Jarvis counts you down <laughs> as you're brushing your teeth. You're right, no, you dude. Get two minutes. Dude, that would be so I'm. Fun. So here's the thing. The only thing I do know about it was because it was in the preview photos of the product. Is that when you sit it on the charging base, the power button on the toothbrush itself turns blue like the arc reactor and the base that it charges looks like a mini arc reactor that turns on all blue in the circular like form. so yeah it was needed yeah (laughs) i'm (laughs) i don't know if i put it up close enough to the camera but can you see the detail on the box yeah oh yeah detailing like <laughs> okay, well, it's yeah. like arc reactor in like a hexagon kind of. Yeah, thing. yeah. Trip. And it looks, it's a lot of different things. It's like the arc reactor, some Iron Man heads, but it's this light, like embossing on mm-hmm. on the full box. So, yeah, I'm I'm like so excited, and I figured that I don't know, it, it'd be a fun thing to open on an after show, Getting because like I said, I don't over there. I don't need it. <laughs> But did I need it? Yeah. Kind of. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's less expensive than like a Gucci toothbrush or something. I'm sure they make those, right? Oh, L- yeah. L- Louis I Vuitton point. toothbrush. Yes. And it doesn't light up. <laughs> right? That's true. This one has that on those. I mean, I don't know. I don't own a Louis Vuitton anything, so I couldn't even tell you if no, I tried. Same. No way. Wouldn't know. <laughs> but, yeah, you know. Well, yeah, well, uh, I obviously am head to toe Louis oh, Vuitton yeah. right now. <laughs> That's what he's wearing. Oh folks. well, I mean, Le- Andrew Gucci. is supreme yeah. T-shirt, and I got the <laughs> the you know Tommy Hilfiger. I don't know. That's a think that's a cheap brand. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that one. I got Massimo shoes on and my. <laughs> <laughs> You have your Supreme shirt, and I have the Foolish Mortal shirt available on podcasters.com slash gear. Right. So how, how this works now is, since you have an Iron Man toothbrush, we now all have to tell what toothbrush we want, right? That's how usually how these things go, right? Um, if I, if, I if they made a $300 toothbrush, I don't know, it's not a 300 If they made a $100 toothbrush of your favorite character... What would it have to be to get you to buy a hundred dollar toothbrush? Oh yeah, that's a good Ooh. one. Yeah. So just so you know, the toothbrush when it's regular price is one ninety nine, but Whoa, I wow. did get it for a, like fifty percent off as part of well, the lightning deal. Up. Yeah, <laughs> it does light small. up. Yeah, it does light up. And that's gonna make it it's, harder. I just like I said, I it was kind of hard for me to justify the purchase because my toothbrush is perfectly okay. It's more about the fact that it's freaking Iron Man. <laughs> the boxing alone is cool. So mm-hmm. just buy a yeah. Presentation. Box, honestly. Well, like Andrew said, at some point when I reset up the shelf behind me, it's like, here's the gauntlet. Here's his helmet. Here's his toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> but you keep it in the box. And then that's when people say, what's in that one? It oh. would be rad, though, if, like you said, like if it has an app or something. Because the other, the toothbrushes that we have oh, yeah. have like a Bluetooth connection so that you brush for a certain amount of time and it's got like timers and all that good stuff. But if this one had an app where it's like, it's time to brush your teeth, sir. It's like, oh. <laughs> your face. Oh, man, you sent me to brush my teeth. <laughs> Jarvis, turn off toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir, you haven't brushed for three minutes. Turn yet. it off. I said, stop. <laughs> Sir, you need really to brush sh- your sh- damn teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want gingivitis? <laughs> he imagine so, it just like starts talking in the middle of the night. It's like. Oh, man. Time hey. to change the brush head. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> just make it the white one. You're fine. All of a sudden. Oh, dude. But what if I change it and it becomes an Ultron toothbrush? Ultron brush. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh my jaw! <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
there's no teeth left in here. Oh, man, that would be horrible Ouch. and yet super rad at the same time. <laughs> this is world. <laughs> uh, all right, so now I have to ask a question. That's a great question, Andrew. What happens now? Like, if you could choose any character for a toothbrush, who would it be? And let's stick to Marvel, considering this is an Iron Man okay. uh, toothbrush. Let's stick to a Marvel toothbrush. Which character would you choose? Andrew, since you posed the question, let's start with you. All right. Um, I didn't think of anything, so I'm going to have to say, um, how about the Phil Coulson toothbrush? Oh, that's a good <laughs> choice. What would it look like? I mean, it's <sighs> you know, it's got a little tie on with some sunglasses. <laughs> um, I don't know, maybe Clark Gregg's face on the thing. <laughs> yeah. It has a flying Corvette base that it sits in. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Okay. That was the first thing. I'll maybe come back to me. I'll maybe I'll think of something better. But yeah, okay. why not Phil Coulson toothbrush? Two hundred bucks for <laughs> Phil Coulson. That's pretty that's, legendary. That's kind of like though. that's kind of like yeah, like really niche. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> when they when they make all four of those, I know you're gonna end up with one of them. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> all right, uh, Mel. Let's go with you. Ooh, off the top of my head, I I would say the Black Panther theme. Not oh, only would it would be, be beautiful, cool but with the lights and everything. High tech. Yeah. And then the sound effects of everything happening. And yeah. <laughs> I love it. Every time you like move it in your mouth, it makes contact with your teeth and the vibranium just starts to glow. Yeah. And it gets more power and more power. But then the toothbrush gets more fierce. So in turn, it cleans your teeth better. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and then like it has it. arms so that when I put it back on, it's crossed. Okay, that's kind of <laughs> dope. I like it. Would you would you think that an an acceptable alternate version would be a Killmonger version of Black Panther where it's glowing gold instead of Ooh. just the purple? So you could get one or the other? Yeah. And both would be like really fancy looking. Like it would have like an elegant look to it. I could see that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say that the purple one would be totally Black Panther, and the gold one would look totally Louis Vuitton. So Andrew, maybe you <laughs> might want to consider one of those. He does Louis Vuitton. Yep, yep. <laughs> to get my Gucci bag. <laughs> I obviously, carry around <laughs> in your Gucci fanny pack. Yeah, <laughs> I got to you know, slip on my uh, I don't know shoes. Your Gucci loafers, my Gucci loafers and my Gucci <laughs> underpants, and yeah, I don't right. know. Yeah. <laughs> Went to Crate and Barrel to buy my I don't I don't know. This is a weird thing. <laughs> I went to Walmart in Chanclas. How about that? Hey. <laughs> I just said Walmart two You are the majority, not the minority. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> See, anybody that knows me knows that is absolutely not true because I will never walk out of my house in flip flops. <laughs> oh, man. Without socks? Without <laughs> socks, yeah. <laughs> nope. Nope. Sorry. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, Larry. Yeah, but he puts the socks over the flip flops, which is weird. And I. <laughs> No, but that's fine. That's totally acceptable. It just looks like wrestling shoes after that. <laughs> right? Flip flops and socks. Yeah, perfect. Anyway, Larry's too <laughs> I like the Phil Coulson take. I think just to add on to that, on the bottom of the toothbrush, it should have like Captain America's shield and say like Steve Rogers forever, like in the oh, circle or something oh, like that. Like that's a little so picture cute. of him. Yeah. Like on the bottom so yeah. you wouldn't see it. <laughs> But if I had to pick, yeah, Captain America is my jam. I, I, there may be already a Captain America toothbrush for all I know. It just doesn't seem as – it's going to be probably like – I think it would be like tactical and cool. Maybe have like, I guess, something that's, you know, crossed between his shield and maybe like the, the motorcycle that he had at one point. Mm, that would be kind of cool. That something would. Like where the handles are. But if you're asking me, I, I would like something built like the Tesseract. Like yeah. a Tesseract Ooh. toothbrush. Because oh, you talk about lighting cool. up. I would like something like that where you like always feel like you have the power, but it's like an evil yet thing for your teeth. I don't know. Just just, <laughs> just something like that. If you're talking Marvel, it's not even a character, but it's a like sought after piece of thing, right? That's always everybody wants. I like the the Tesseract yeah. idea. Carrying it around like a staff. Yep. Like it's just glowing about. all day. 
All and it, you're not doing anything. You're not brushing your teeth or anything, but you're carrying around the damn tesseract. And then when it goes inside, like that blue light you always get when you go to the dentist, and they're trying to like put the, make your teeth brighter. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so just I did a quick Google search, and just so you know, there is a Captain America electric toothbrush. Uh, it is designated for children, though. Oh. So he is a little cartoony. Story of my life. <laughs> but if you want it, I will get it for you. <laughs> I don't know if my dentist is going to recommend it. He's going okay, to go well, back to the Philips Sonicare. <laughs> if you change your mind, let me know. <sighs> let me I know. I will. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, look, I don't know if there are any other ones as part of this series. I would not have even known about this had Ross not sent me a message about it. But uh, damn it, I'm, am I glad that he did. Yeah. I love it. So I can't wait till we do the full unboxing of this because I'm pretty excited to see what it looks like. But yeah, I mean, I think there's plenty of characters that would fit really well with something like this. So if they end up doing an entire series, I don't know if I would necessarily collect them. But that Black Panther idea, damn, that's 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 a winner right there. Anyway, we're going Agatha too far one, just with toothbrushes here. You got a Thor here. Lebowski oh, one. No. You got a Rocket <laughs> Raccoon one. Come yeah. on, they got oh, Groot. What about Groot, a Groot yeah. one? It's all Groot twigs. All wooden. And, it, oh, and it dances around. That's oh my gosh! <laughs> Seriously. Nah. <laughs> don't. Nope. That's all. That's it. We can't clear YouTube copyright if I keep going. Strike. <laughs> yep. Blocked in the United Arab Emirates now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. North so Korea just, can't watch our videos. So just so you guys know, uh, the joke behind that is that this last week, apparently our Instagram account got hit with some copyright strikes for videos that we had posted three <laughs> years ago. Uh, not exactly sure what prompted it, but apparently somebody is just jonesing at the fact that we posted these videos. And I just thought it was funny that three years later, when we've forgotten about the post, all yeah. of a sudden we're getting these uh, notices that they're being deleted from our account. So, yeah. Yeah. And it was really random locations around the world and pretty random videos. But it's okay. Sorry to all you listeners in uh, South Jordan or something. I don't know. I it can't was remember crazy. all the places. Yeah, it was I remember crazy. the UAE was one of them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, so speaking of boxes, I know, Andrew, you said you got something in the mail. And oh, I got a box. I'm, I'm a little jealous because I got the small box that has this red panda thing on it. But you got something much cooler. Yeah, here's the box here. You can hear the box. I pull it out of the box. Throw the box over there. Whoa, Hi, this is the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a professional. Right. Right. That's how they do it on YouTube. Over there, across the floor. I don't care. Wow. <laughs> so my D23. <laughs> my D23 gold member uh, package arrived. Nice. Ooh. D23 around the world of Disney parks. It's a cool little thing. Nice matte finish. Yeah, it's a matte finish box. It's blue with a teal stripe. Um, so you open the box, and there's a nice little um, certificate that welcomes you to being a D23 member, gold member. Um, and then the first little thing in the box is your passport um, mm. to, for the parks around the world. And you, it tells you all about um, the different uh, parks around the world, including the cruise line, and then a little bit about Walt's plane. And then at the end of this box, there's a cool little D23 gold member aviator pin. Ooh. It's like the captain's wings oh, kind that's of deal. Cool. And then a very nice uh, metal luggage tag that nice. has the um, logo, the Waltz plane logo, plus cool. the D23 gold member thing. Heavy duty has like a little screw and nut on it, plus a little wire um, thing to put it on your bag. And then the uh, big part of the, the package is a pin set. A How many is this? Seven pin set. Um, nice. I, maybe I should talk into the microphone. Um, of pins uh, representing each of the Disney parks around the world Ooh. plus the cruise line. That's um, cool. So I got a Disneyland um, pin 
featuring, you know, Mickey's Fun Wheel, Matterhorn, Small World, Hatbox Ghost, Mr. Toad, um, Cozy Cone, and then the Walt Disney World has Figment, Spaceship Earth, the Tree of Life, Monorail, Orange Bird, Tower of Terror. Then, um, let's see, Disneyland Paris has um, Sleeping Beauty Castle, Remy, their Earful Tower, uh, Big Thunder, Phantom Manor, and a Cheshire Cat. Um, the cruise line has Minnie Mouse, Captain Minnie, plus Chip and Dale as sailors. Um, there's Minnie in her pants, like we talked about <laughs> a couple weeks ago. Um, Shanghai, featuring, um, let's see, Tron, Light Cycle, Peter Pan, um, Pirates, and uh, I don't know what that one is. Some mountainy thing. <laughs> um, and then Hong attraction. Kong Disney mountainy thing. Mountainy thing. I don't remember all the attractions at Shanghai. Forgive me. I'm sorry. And then Hong Kong Disneyland has Mystic Manor with little Albert. That's cool. They have uh, a little Dumbo and Space Mountain. And then Tokyo has Duffy and Baymax plus uh, Boo and Sully. And then the um, Mount. Um, oh. What's the big volcano? Wanahakalu. I was gonna say yeah. that. <laughs> the big volcano from from Tokyo Disney Sea and a lighthouse and the big um, cruise ship, the Columbia. Like uh, it's like the restaurant ship that they have there. Anyway, so the pin set's really cool, and it's got it's the map of the um, you know the world map, and then it has little um, kind of small world looking well it has different other characters like the uh hippo from small world couple small world tiger Cute. Da, 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 da. but then like a goat from big thunder over here and then the uh, sea serpent from um 20, leagues oh, that's rosita cool. there a uh, kangaroo yeah so it's a really fun Fun pin set. Um, they're very nice made. You know, everyone's double pin back on the back. Um, yeah, so it's a really nice box, really nice uh, pin set. So if you haven't gotten yours yet and you're a gold member, uh, be excited. I'm, I'm really more excited about the luggage tag. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I feel you. The whole thing's really cool. So it, it makes a nice little display piece if you can find some kind of, like, frame or um, – like a what do you call it? like a shadow box or something to put it in it yeah. would go very nicely it's really really nice yeah, yeah. i'm looking so forward to our showing thing. up now i i didn't remember what was going to be a part of the box and now that you've shown it to us i'm actually really excited about it there's obviously a theme there is an aviation sort of theme to it and a lot of that i think has to do with the fact that some of you listening might be familiar with the fact that Walt Disney's plane was kind of stationed in the back of Animal Kingdom at Walt Disney World. And it's kind of sat there for a really long time. Several months ago, uh, it was covered up because it was in the process of being moved. And Disney is actually currently in talks with Amazon, who is the sponsor or one of the sponsors of, of D23 this year, I believe, to uh, restore the I think it's a, a grooming Gulfstream one, if I remember correctly. Um, they're in the process of renovating it because Walt's plane is scheduled to be on display at the D23 Expo this year. Nice. So D23 sending out this package that's very aviation based, I think, ties in with the fact that this is going to be their centerpiece attraction at the Expo. Yeah, it's going to be it's I think it's going to be great. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. Yeah, and especially with that, you know, the luggage tag with the plane logo, yeah. the tail fin logo on it and everything. Um it's the the plane has a as a Walt and planes has like a very interesting history. Like the, I think he had three planes in total, something three or four planes yeah. in total. This is the final one, the biggest of them all. And yeah. uh yeah. Yeah, I believe it was Amazon is sponsoring the plane and getting it shipped from florida to anaheim to anaheim right yeah and then yeah because visa is the i believe the overall sponsor of the expo okay yeah i knew they were sponsoring something in particular and i i know now we know that it's the plane i hear it is uh the plane will be part of a new exhibit called mickey mouse one waltz plane presented by amazon yeah i think it's going to be really cool i don't know if they're going to let you actually tour the plane actually get inside of it but depending on how much of it is restored and how much they want to preserve, I'm assuming that they might just leave it on the floor. 
Um, that's going to be interesting, by the way, figuring out how they're going to get that into the convention center. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to piece it together as part of the expo and then take it apart to remove it. I'm sure that's how they're shipping it, too. They probably have to take the wings off to yeah. put it on a yeah. train or something. But, I mean, it'll be a fun thing to see. I mean, I know that there's plenty of museums that have several uh, things like this on display. The Science Museum here in, in L.A. has um, the Space Shuttle Endeavor mm -hmm. on display that you can go see. And it's just super cool to walk around that thing. So getting a piece of Disney history, I think, is super cool. Especially, I don't know if you know this, Andrew, but this one in particular was the one that they that they used to tour the grounds when they were surveying for Disney World, right? That's like the significance yes, of this version. I believe that is true, yes, because that's this would be uh, the last plane that Walt had. And um, I, be I believe he had a smaller one during the... I'll have to look it up again, but I believe there was a smaller one that he had um, like during the initial like uh, land, um, you know, looking at the land originally and then needed to upgrade uh, over the, you know, over time. But I believe that is true. It will be super cool if they let you inside, though. Because oh, yeah. even if they just kind of let you go up to the door and kind of take pictures from the inside, it's one of those situations where it's kind of like looking into Walt's office at the studio or looking into Walt's apartment at Disneyland, right? They may not let you inside and sit around or do whatever you want, but... It'll be nice to just kind of walk up and, you know, take a couple pictures, maybe get your picture walking out of the plane. Disney, if you're listening, D23, I think that's a great photo op that you can offer. You are welcome. <laughs> like, maybe they'll have some luggage there, like, standing by so you can pick up some luggage. Look like you're just deboarding the plane. Oh, you never know. Have, like, a magic <laughs> shot where it looks like you're on the runway or something. That'd be fun. Yeah. Or what if they had, like, a suitcase and Mickey – and you become the Walt in the storyteller statue from uh, from DCA. Like, they have you pose in that same... But what does that have to do with an airplane? It doesn't, but he's got oh, okay. luggage and, you know... The vintage oh, feel. I see. Yeah. You can have multiple. I mean, granted, it was decades before... <laughs> 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 but, hey, who's counting, yeah, right? It's a story. I mean, if the last couple of years have taught us anything is that you can wake up s Saturday morning and all of a sudden it's Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Uh anyway, uh yeah, what what were we talking about? The airplane? The airplane. <laughs> oh, know. the D23 box. The box. Yeah. D23 gold members, that's coming. Super excited. Expect that hopefully soon. Hey, we talked about Disney Plus earlier. But we didn't talk about the new tier that's happening. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. I'll talk as much as I can because the press release that they came from, that they released, was that out, that came out, that they released, didn't have a lot of information other than the fact that the tier, what's impor important about it is it's ad based. So there will be ads to it, but it's cheaper. And it's a part of their goal to expand their um, subscriptions because right now as of january 1st they had 130 million subscribers which is really great but they do have this uh goal to hit um i think it's 230 to 260 million by 2024 fiscal year which is would be a high goal because that would be like competing almost surpassing netflix and speaking of streaming services what it what it does though it's kind of hazen has talked about before when we were talking a few episodes back we mentioned when we had these uh, premiere movie releases and to expand the viewership they may want to do like free viewing because that's what other subscribers have done and i think this is their this is their meeting half kind of thing where we'll give you a lower ad based tier uh which it's gonna have to be at least uh, lower than what you pay right now, which is, I believe, what the seven ninety nine or six ninety nine yeah. is like the automatic price, right? So that's going to come out in twenty twenty two later. That will be in the U S. But they are anticipating expanding that even further out worldwide in twenty twenty three. So that could help their viewership. I think that's the same idea of the company they bought, which is Hulu, of giving you an ad base. So I think the bigger question is, what will be the ad base? price because if it's like hulu i mean hulu's ad base is like almost half 
of the price you pay without ads. So I, that's the biggest thing I think. I think it's a good move for them to at least give more options for people to watch. But I'll admit, myself, if you're asking me, and I'm going to guess we're going to go around the room, I mean, it's the main key about like Disney Plus, which is really nice, is watching these things without ads. Yeah. It's really cool to get through. Yeah, pretty much that. Just you don't. Yeah, we don't. I don't like ads. I'm just going to say that. I don't like ads. So I would gladly pay. But um, I do see their point. I do. It's to bring in others who may not want to pay full price. And hopefully after then they see it and they may. I think what Disney wants to do is hope that they will upgrade without having to get ads. So that's one good way to do it. So, yeah, it's it's a good move. It is. Yeah, and it just it makes Disney Plus more accessible to to people in different, you know, income markets, you know, people that have, you know, kids or whatever and you know, the kids really want to watch Disney Plus, but you know, money's tight, you know, the, this might be just the the little push that some of them can make it make it work in their their family budget or whatever. So, and Disney will gladly eat up those uh extra 5 bucks or whatever it is from any person that'll take advantage of the lower price. Um, so it's kind of, you know, get, you know, win for Disney cause they get, you know, mo money and then yeah, it gets more people access to it if they weren't able to afford it at the higher price. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's, it's kind of a double edged sword, honestly, because judging by the direction that the Disney company has been going in over the last year when it comes to pricing, when it comes to products, and when it comes to how they manage a lot of the things that they have, I can see what you're saying that this would be a really favorable option for a lot of people because it's making, it's putting it in a price bracket that's really attractive, right? But Larry brings up a good point that Disney Plus, I think, just recently went up a dollar. I think it was like six or seven, and it's currently eight now. I think like in the last month or two, they raised it to eight dollars. I think you get a price break if you pay for the full year. But overall, if you're already at an eight dollar a month premium, right, you're getting it without commercials. When you compare it to Hulu, Hulu's premium cost is around twelve dollars a month for zero ads. But you can get an ad-supported version of Hulu for seven. So if they use that model, it doesn't mean like it feels like Disney isn't going to give us a three-dollar ad-supported version of Disney Plus. They're going to give us a full no ad version for twelve dollars and an ad-free version for seven or eight, as it's currently priced now. And I'm this is just me speculating because of the trends of how they've been charging for things and how they've been setting themselves up. And if they want to hit that amount of subscribers and they want to hit the numbers that they've promised their investors, you're right. This is a, a financially, this is a really great move for them. Right. But the, some of the downsides to some of the services, when you have like an ad supported um, platform is that one, I feel like you get, a diminished return on quality not just because you're interrupting the stuff that you're watching but literally quality like i don't feel it streams at full quality because they're trying to save on bandwidth that's one and i know this because for a long time we had the ad supported hulu like we probably had ad supported hulu for a good year before we couldn't take the fact that the quality was lower the fact that the commercials popped up way too frequently and between commercials, like it took a while for those commercials to load. Like they weren't just popping up, getting them over with and moving on. You would sit there for a good five to 10 seconds while it was loading. Then it would load the 40 second plus commercials. And then it would sit there for another five to 10 seconds when it loaded the TV show back that you were watching. So that frustration led us to say, just pay for the full version of it. And I think, like you said, that's what Disney's banking on, right? I think mm -hmm. they want more people to just get frustrated enough that they pay for it, they make the money back, and, you know, it's a business model, right? right? It's, that's what they're there for. They want to make money, so it makes sense. But if, like, sometimes kids don't care. Right. Kids will sit through commercials. Like how long did we sit through commercials when we were kids all the time? Right. Mm -hmm. 
So kids will just watch it because it's what they watch. So if you want something that's less expensive, then this works out perfectly for you because the kids aren't going to care. They're just going to sit there and wait for their content to come on. Supporting things with ads, yes, does supplement the missing revenue from not having someone pay full price or something. But it also allows them to, to make way more money than what the cost of the additional subscription is because if you think of the number of subscriptions that they have or they anticipate having minus four or five dollars per person per month or per, per year think of how many thousands of dollars they're getting for one ad that's playing per day per week per month or per quarter they're going to be making hand over fist when it comes to how much they were missing revenue wise so from a business standpoint, this is really smart. They're going to make a lot of money. That's what they wanted. And Disney Plus, in that sense, should be more successful than it has been in their eyes. They're going to grow it. But from a consumer standpoint, uh, it does have potential to cause some, some barriers as far as how much you would enjoy it. And I guess, like we said, they could possibly be banking on the fact that they just want people to get frustrated enough to just pay the extra five bucks a month. Because we've done it. I, I am a testament to that. I got to the point where I was just like, ah, I just pay the extra $5 monthly. Yeah. And then we got lucky that they had the bundle deal. Um, so when our current D23 subscription runs out, because we were uh, charter members for Disney Plus at D23, we have uh, two, three years, two years, three years. I don't remember three what the years. end. Three years. So when that initial pricing goes away, then we'll be able to renew with a bundle package um by the time that we're done i don't know what pricing is going to look like maybe we should buy a year now while it's still eight bucks a month and just cash it in at the end of this renewal cycle i don't know <laughs> i don't I mean, know how that i don't works. think i don't think they're going they're you know see if i put my foot in my mouth here i don't think they're going to be raising prices on a quarterly basis um I, it seems to be more like a yearly basis that, you know, that prices go up. I mean, Amazon, if you compare, you know, other people's Amazon just raised their price, but they hadn't raised it in like three, four years or whatever. Um, so d at this point right now, I think if they start raising it quarterly or, you know, twice a year or something like that, they don't have the content to back up the price where Hulu does. Hulu has like, all the TV shows, all the stuff that you missed on TV, whatever. That's we. That's why we have Hulu is to be like, okay, this thing didn't record on the thing, or we missed this. You know, here's all the shows. We have the commercial one, but it's we just watch stuff that's on the air usually. Um, Hulu stuff, but I think getting to that twelve dollar mark that you mentioned, I don't think at this point, you know, in the next maybe. I don't know, three years or so, maybe, depending on how much they really invest in programming for Disney Plus. And that's where they're bringing this, the Netflix stuff on. And they have this huge back catalog that's not on Disney Plus yet. So I don't know what they're doing. Um, but yeah, I just don't think that at this point, the, the public would be very happy and many people would be willing to pay $12 for the minimum you know the small amount of content that's on disney plus compared to say netflix or hulu or xyz i want to agree with you on that one but if the disneyland resort has taught us anything is that people will still pay and yes, i kind of feel like it's the same thing with disney plus and you you mentioned a really key thing that they have a huge catalog that they haven't unleashed into the world yet Things like the wonderful world of Disney, I know, I know, like, I don't know, but I feel it inside me that they've been restoring that and that they've been holding on to that one for something big like this, where maybe the next price hike isn't a single dollar. Maybe the next price hike is 250 And then at that point, they're like, but you're getting all of this wonderful world of Disney and you're getting all this other stuff. And as Disney fans, a lot of us are just going to be like, oh, I want to see all of that. Like, I never got to see them when I was, yeah, I, I'll pay the extra two bucks for that. And then I think as Disney fans, one thing that we do a lot is, because I know I do this, is 
Well, I mean, what does it cost? I mean, in comparison to going to the park a single day. Well, the park is a mm-hmm. hundred bucks plus, but this is only gonna be thirty bucks extra a year. It's only two bucks more a month. So yeah, sure, it's less than a coffee. Why not? You know what I mean? I think there's always going to be something for the majority of us that's going to just say, pay for it. I want to see that content. Why not? And just like just like when we talked about Genie Plus, you know, for, for people like me that don't want to stand around in line, you know, for that amount of time anymore, it was easier for me to fork over the money, you know, and, and do the four payments of Afterpay and just be like, just get me through already. You know, the same thing's going to happen here. Ideally, if they want to get more people, they would keep that pricing for quite some time because you're right. Some services go years before they have to raise the price. But I think in the last two years, the anomaly that we saw was that with so many people being home, streaming prices had to go up because bandwidth was being taken up like crazy with so many people hitting the servers, watching so much 24 7 while we were at home you know in quarantine and all that stuff so uh this is different like this i think is going to be a really good test to see how disney stands as a premium service on its own like you said without the type of content that hulu has for instance if they begin to shift some of that over to make disney plus feel like it's got more content and and feel like it's worth that price i think people aren't going to have a problem paying for it as like you said as long as the content is there exactly add more stuff yeah pay, you know it increases the value of your service yeah so yeah you know put you you make me a roger rabbit show and uh, whatever i'll you know i'll pay 20 bucks a month it's fine <laughs> yeah i think Don't i think that's ideas. what it is it's like if they were to add everything that we're asking for Things that are in the vault, things that we can't see or get, I would pay. But until then, I'll stick to what I have. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm curious if there's anything that's not on Disney Plus right now that you would like to see as part of the service. Join the conversation. Let us know in the comments section on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or join us over on our Discord server. If you haven't joined us yet, super easy to join us. Head over to Instagram. You'll see a pinned story or the blog post for this episode, podcateers.com slash 403. Uh, You'll see the link to join us on Discord. And uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts. What shows you would like to see that currently are not part of Disney Plus? Uh, I know I mentioned the wonderful world of Disney. Those were just shows that I think are just so fun. Walt's charm, I think, really comes through in a lot of those shows. So I think they would be really nice to have on the service. All right. Well, before we move on, uh, you know what we should do right now? We should. uh, You know what? I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. We should talk about the fantastic group of listeners uh, that help us uh, support the show. Is that what we're going to talk about? I think so. Okay. Larry, they are called? The FGP squad, yeah. That's right. (laughs) And Mel, they help us out how? Every month. With contributions and lots of love and support via <laughs> Patreon. <laughs> Patreon, sorry, brain fart. <laughs> I'm so used to you guys doing this, and I stay quiet. So <laughs> I know I threw everyone off by You're throwing up. everyone in the deep end on this one. <laughs> so the FGP Squad, awesome group of people that help us out with a monthly contribution via Patreon. It's their support that helped make these episodes of Podcateers possible. If you want more info on how you can become part of the FGP Squad family, you can head over to podcateers.com slash FGP for more information. There you will find a list of some of our top contributors, some information on what the FGP Squad is, and a link to our Patreon. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. We'll be happy to help you out with any questions that you might have. But being a part of the FGP Squad does get you some additional perks, like discounts on Podcateers gear, random gifts that I send out whenever I have the ability. Uh, Sometimes I'll make stickers. Sometimes I'll send out 
other cool things. Plus, you also get access to additional content on Patreon, like the Podcast Years After Show. You get access to our happy hour calls. And you also get a special section in our Discord server specifically for the FGP squad. So if you, again, have any questions about it, we'll be happy to answer. Just hit us up. And to all of the members of the FGP squad family, we just want to send a huge thank you for your continued support. Hey, speaking of Instagram... The day we are recording this episode, March Mayhem has officially launched. And I just checked it before we started recording. Dole Whip is wiping the floor with the Matterhorn macaroon. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I mean, coconut. It's a weird texture. (laughs) Hey, look, I love coconut flavored stuff. Coconut is great. I had a coconut cookie after dinner today. Oh, so good. In your mouth, though, the little coconut bits, it's like. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I guess it the depends sugar. on the time. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. The, there we go. You're talking about Here the ones go. that have like the little like like sugar flakes with like they're coated in they look like frosted flakes, but they're coconut shavings, right? Yeah, the ones that come on the Matterhorn. Yeah, the macaroon. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are kind of annoying. I get you. You know, I you. voted for the Dole Whip. I mean, that's <laughs> it's hard to it's hard not right, to right exactly. It's hard not to. Oh, I did too. Yeah, it's <laughs> iconic. Yeah, like, you, like I know the Matterhorn's iconic, but the Matterhorn's not up for debate here. It is the macaroon <laughs> versus the Dole Whip, and it's, it's and a hundred percent Dole Whip right now. Right. You know what? I think I think I just we yeah, you gave me an idea for the you know one next year. It's just a, a random Disney things, or you can have a you know showdown of Dole Whip versus the Matter. Horn. Yeah, <laughs> that would be funny. Which that is be funny. better? That would Mickey, be funny. Mickey Mouse or Star Tours? Oh, that's a hard oh, choice, update. Yeah. Breaking news! Breaking news! <laughs> it is no longer one hundred percent for the Dole Whip. <laughs> we do have votes. Someone rogue for the Matterhorn macaroon. Andrew, did you go vote for the macaroon just to get it to? <laughs> right now. Yeah, I went on my Quizneyland account. And my... One on each account. <laughs> I got nine accounts. That's funny. Yeah, I did not expect uh, the Dole Whip to take such a commanding lead at the beginning. It's an explosive beginning to March Mayhem. Uh, we look forward to this every year. It's super fun. We had a question, actually, on our Discord server. FGP squad member Brian asked how we kind of seeded these. And so just so you know, there is an even number of savory and sweet items. And we there was a conversation about separating them so that half of it was all sweet, half of it was all savory. And then at the end, it was a battle of savory versus sweet to see who reigns supreme snack wise. Uh, But in the end, we just thought it would be a lot more fun if we mixed it up. Uh, we seeded the top items that we felt deserved to be the top seeds, which were things like popcorn, the churro, the Dole Whip, uh, the Mickey pretzel, stuff like that. You know, some of the iconic snacks. And then we worked our way backwards from there. So in case you were wondering, that's how we seeded everything. And I'm I'm curious to see what wins. I went on the record as being Team Popcorn I don't know if I'm shooting myself in the foot for that because every time I make a selection early on, it seems to get eliminated really early. (laughs) But I feel like I got a pretty solid choice this time because, come on, it's popcorn from Disneyland. Yeah, no, it is solid. It is. It totally is. I I still can't decide. And it's I'm kind of like Heather where she was talking about a churro or a Dole Whip. And I'm like, I'm in the same place because... How do you choose? How how do you choose? Like, I, I can't. I really. This is the first time where I'm like, I don't know. I I love Dole Whip, but then there's the classic churro. Churro's taking it all the way, baby. <laughs> is that what you're going with, Andrew? Churro. Churro all the way. I'm surprised. That Put it in the not... record books. Oh well, you <laughs> like your books. churro and coke is your board. icon drink, right? And a chimney. Churro and a coke. It's go. Yeah, but I, you know, what? I love chimichanga, but churro's better. I could, I could eat like one chimichanga a day, Chur- maybe two. <laughs> I could eat probably uh, about forty-five churros a day. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't feel great afterwards, but I, you know. But you did yeah, it. You know, it's a churro. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. And they have so many flavors of churros, whereas the chimichanga is just a single churro. flavor. 
Well, they got breakfast chimichangas too. That's oh, that's uh, true. Who who told us? Some FGP member. It's hot in the um, streets. Who told me about it? I don't know. Somebody told us about breakfast chimichanga. On uh, anyway, somebody FGP is great. They tell you about chimichangas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually remember when that got posted. I just don't remember who said it. Let me see if I can quickly find. Was it? It, it was Heather. Uh, Heather. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so I she had gone Thanks, early in Heather. December, breakfast and in the food channel on the discord server she posted a picture of the breakfast chimichanga which honestly until she posted that i had no idea existed same me either but now i want to try one (laughs) yeah sounds good well i mean i'm excited larry any picks who do you think is going to take it let's do this sports wise larry who do you think is going to (laughs) take it all the way in the tournament for march mayhem snack edition well i think a lot of people are rooting for the churro this year it's been having a lot of good different variations they really resuited their (laughs) cells you know changing even their colors their jerseys but uh you know you can never count out the corn dog i mean come on it's the dog of all dogs you gotta be careful about that and please do not get me started on the Mickey ice cream bar. Everybody just needs to chill. Great points on the changing of the jerseys. I think we're going to have to see how this one pans out. We're going to take it back to the floor of the Disneyland Resort. Oh, breaking news. Popcorn's making it hot right Popcorn's now. Popcorn's coming all over. in. Look, Look at out. that. Okay. That's my choice. Popcorn definitely for the win. Whether it's the buttery popcorn that you smell as you're going down Main Street or that freaky looking popcorn you get on Batu in Galaxy's Edge. It doesn't matter because it's delicious. You want some flavoring? Maybe add some pickle juice just to give it a little tang. Do you think it's weird? Possibly, but I bet you're going (laughs) to enjoy it. Until we get some more votes, we're signing off for March Mayhem. Flag on the play. <laughs> Red card. Yellow card. <laughs> <laughs> Popcorn card. Yeah. Dole whip card. I'm look, I like I said, I'm excited. Uh, I really like this tournament that we're doing this time around. You know, I, I thought a lot about what we could give away. Um, usually what we have people do is we have people fill out a copy of their bracket. But unfortunately, I couldn't get the bracket posted in time. So if we had a couple of matchups, and I'm just asking you guys now, if we had a couple of matchups and people still submitted a bracket, do you think it's still early enough that they can't fully predict the winner? And maybe if they submit it by like the end of day two or day three or something, which would be the release day of this episode, technically. Yeah. Sure. yeah. I mean, there's cell it can go any way. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I have six Instagram accounts. It can go any way I <laughs> wow. want. To. Wow. I got an Instagram Starting account to farm. Like a, <laughs> right? Starting to sound like an election a while back, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's what I'll do. As soon as we're done, please remind me because I usually forget to do this. But at the end of the episode, uh, when we're done recording on Instagram, I will post a copy of the bracket. We'll have people fill it out and post their predictions. Anyone that posts their bracket and comes close to uh, finding the winner or whoever actually gets the winner will be in the running for a prize. That way, if we have multiple people, we'll put them all into a hat or something. We'll pull their name and the winner will get something. What that is, I don't know yet. But Asins, we'll give Iron something Man away. What? It, no. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, hey, whoa. whoa. He just, he, wow, whoa. you were slick. Whoa. No. Whoa. Whoa. Hey. What? How, who said what? Let's, I let's, didn't say no. No way. Oh, hey. No. No. Okay. A nice Forget shiny about what Andrew sticker. said. <laughs> I didn't say nothing. Uh, yeah. We, um, I don't know what we're going to give. I We can find something. I think it'll be. I got stuff. Yeah, we can find we can something pitch fun. In. But we'll put it stuff. together a little yeah. uh, gift or something. But yeah, we'll give people a couple of days to submit their brackets. And then if we have multiple people that happen to guess what the winner is going to be, we'll go ahead and we'll put them in a hat. We'll draw a name for a winner. You will have to be 18 or over to participate in case you win. We cannot send a, a gift or anything to a minor. So if you want to participate and you are under 18, please get your parent to vote for you uh, because... <laughs> We just we can't send it to anyone underage. And you also can't work uh, in a coal mine 
either. Not sure no exactly minors. how that plays into this, but that is correct. That is technically you said true. No minors. Yeah. Oh, we, I got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. I get it. Wow, wow, slow play on words. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. okay. Yeah. It's getting this. I, I'm, I'm, my jokes are getting bad this episode. I can tell it's getting later. <laughs> I had a long day today. You know, I was painting Ooh. all day for work. So he's been mining all day. <laughs> I've been all mining. Right. Dig, dig, In the dig, month. dig. I'm just gonna dig, call dig, him dig, Crypto dig, 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 Andrew. Dig. Mining all day. <laughs> if only. Uh, okay, so that's going to come up very soon. Uh, we'll try to find a prize. Uh, also, coming up this week, we have a new episode of Quizneyland, so make sure that you check yeah. that out. Andrew, uh, what are you talking about this week on Quizneyland? Uh, this episode of Quizneyland, we're talking about uh, goats, video games, Wreck-It Ralph, and uh, some Disneyland history. So it's going to be a fun episode. You mean real goats, right? Not the goats. <laughs> yeah, re- well, a, a, a particular a goat that has a particular um, connection to... The greatest of all to, goats. Yes. A, yes. <laughs> it might be the greatest of all goats. You know, it's got got something a little bit extra than uh, um, normal goats. I'll just leave it at that. It's got a little something, something that most goats don't have. Um, so, yeah, goats... Yeah, nice. goats, goats are fun. <laughs> anyway. This yeah, episode of Quizman episode... brought to you by March Mayhem. When <laughs> you're in the mood for choosing a snack, check out March Mayhem, where you can vote for your favorite snacks. Coming up hot all day like the popcorn popping throughout the resort. Buttery and smooth, salty and sweet, depending on where you get it. But either way, just as enjoyable. Larry, <laughs> tell them what they've won. You've won a bad gift. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. I got to snip that and put it in the episode of my commercial. Wow. <laughs> we got a weird sponsor this this uh, this month or these two months, so it's uh, yeah, maybe that'll be better. <laughs> Sounds like somebody doing a very poor Gaston impression. For the, I'm for still the waiting commercial. for my BetterNed.com shirt. Yeah, I don't know who's in charge of making that, but um, I ordered oh, one. I'll, I'm just waiting I'll for talk it now. To, uh, I got to talk to uh, Frank over in printing and see what, <laughs> why they're not uh, it's getting sent out. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to a couple more things. Speaking of March mayhem, let's switch to a different type of mayhem, and that is Muppets mayhem. There was Yay! an announcement that we're getting a new Muppets project. And uh, it's starring Lily Singh. Lily Singh of YouTube fame. Most recently, she did have her own show on NBC very, very late at night. Um, initial thoughts and what has been announced? What should we look forward to? And what is it about exactly? Um, Muppets Mayhem uh, is kind of like an origin story. You know, Hazen loves origin stories. Um, yes. Is the yes, origin stories of the electric teeth, Dr. Teeth, the electric mayhem, the electric teeth. That's a different thing. <laughs> We're um, tired. <laughs> Dr. Teeth and the electric mayhem. Um, the band from The Muppet Show. Everybody knows Dr. Teeth, big green guy, and, you know, Zoot on the saxophone, Janice, and everybody in the band. Um, and so it looks like it's, uh, you know, a project from um, uh, Bill Beretta, who's uh, a Muppet performer and jeff yorks and uh adam f goldberg um, yeah the, of the goldberg crazy goldbergs plus a bunch of other you know worked on plenty of other things um is working on this and i'm very excited um i love the muppets i'll watch any muppet thing and i'm hoping this is more of a a show you know muppets uh now was fine for what it was but i want i want a muppet show a series of you know uh, with a storyline that has you know connections and jokes and you know so that's what i'm hoping this is um and on uh the disney plus instagram they showed you know group photo of the electric mayhem and they are including um a sometimes member of the electric mayhem lips who's the trumpet player if anybody you know has any electric mayhem yeah. background, um, so he's you know not an original member to the electric mayhem, um, you know starting at the original Muppet Show, but he started like in a later season, like season five or something of the Muppet Show, and is an on and off member. But uh, who knows? He's apparently being retconned into putting being an original member, which is cool. Like 
you know, Lips is a cool character. Bazoot's my favorite, but I, I think it sounds like a cool project. I hope uh, I said everything that the show's about. So, uh, yeah. How is Lily Singh involved Dr. again? Chief. She's the human character. Oh. <laughs> okay. I don't know. It's probably going to be like a like a producer or a manager or something. That would be my guess. I, they don't have, you know, I don't think they have too many details. Um, oh, here we go. Sorry. She is a young A&R executive. So, yeah. So, signs, probably signs them to a label or working with them for building their band i guess i don't know i'm excited oh. to see whatever happens with this but yeah okay it does okay. seem it does seem pretty cool so when i first saw the announcement for this i have to be honest um because i didn't read the article i didn't know much about it i did initially get worried about it because uh on on youtube lily singh was pretty entertaining i think she had a lot of really great videos and she's been on youtube for quite some time like she I don't want to say she was like a YouTube original. I don't know how far back she was uh, producing content, but she was pretty well known as like a pretty well established YouTuber. And then she tried to transition like most YouTubers to doing network television. Um, however, she ended up getting a late night show. And at the time that she got it, it made uh, a lot of news. It was really cool because uh, you don't see, first of all, a lot of female hosts you know, hosting and definitely not a lot of people of color, not, not a lot of females of color hosting TV shows or network talk shows like that. So it made a lot of waves when she first appeared, uh, but the show was not very well received. And NBC, I believe it was on NBC, ended up canceling it within like the first season or so. And so when when this came up, I wondered if this was another attempt at reviving a similar type of talk show style thing that they had done with her before. But now that you've uh, told me a little bit more about it, it just it seems like it's going to be a lot more Muppet oriented. And as a sketch comedy YouTuber, I think she should fit right in to I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, it depends on the script and the director and all that stuff uh, that that's going to be a part of it. But I think as as a Muppet project, the way that you're describing it, I think she's going to be a lot better at this type of sketch comedy thing because of her YouTube background. It could be. I, I'm not too familiar with her. I have no opinion about her, but I'm excited that we get to see not just the Muppets. We get to see Electric Mayhem, and we get to see them, like... I, I'm excited for that. I give me backstories on them. I'm I will. This is the kind of content I'm I'm okay with. Like I'm always, I'm good with new stories by those that we love and we know of. And seeing what they did, I know it's not going to be the same as um, Muppets Haunted Mansion, but seeing how they went from Muppets Now to that. Okay, I got, I got, you know what? There's hope. It'll be all right. You know, I'm, I'm good. I'm just excited to see everybody, all the faces. So it'll be fun. What makes animal animal? Maybe we'll learn on <laughs> Muppets. His character know. is the one I'm most interested in. Because yeah. if they do this like a documentary style or a rockumentary, I think it'll be cool just like asking animal questions like blah, 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 <laughs> yeah <in the> <laughs> yeah for me the what came through was when i was reading one of the articles the adam f goldberg um being chosen as the person to direct and do some writing with bill uh with a longtime muppet performer it, he was really excited i guess to abc uh president I made a quote so that they was really excited to do this. That was a lifelong like dream for him actually to do something Muppets related. So whenever I hear that, it just reminds me of John Favreau, you know, uh, taking over star Wars, things like that. When people have that kind of like personal tie, it doesn't necessarily mean it equals home run, but it helps a lot more for them to commit to like we're talking about here. If we're going to make a backstory of, you know, animal and overall just having electric mayhem or me. Yeah having the band back together basically you got to find a way to make this creative and i think 
if you got someone that's really excited about it, it's going to help because then the script, you know, that's, I think that's the Muppets thing. It's a weird thing we always talk about. Like they need a good script and a good music and something that has the background to be, um, uh, connecting to the audience. That's the three things. And they did that really well. The Haunted Mansion, when they did that, that came out really well. So that's, this is one of those times where I'm like, maybe the right combination works because they've always been about collabing. Uh, we're collaborating with actors, collaborating with directors. So let's just hope. I'm hoping that Adam Goldberg has the right touch to keep this one going. Because I still, we always talk about, we were very, well, at least I know Hazen and most of you guys were happy when they bring the Muppets, the ABC show they had back in the, you know, 20, I can't remember what year it was, but it was earlier 20s, right? 2014, 20, 15. 14? Yeah, 15. It's around there. But only had one season, and it was really funny. And I think uh, I just think it had the wrong timing. Something 15. like that now might have been different. So hopefully this is not necessarily the same thing, but hopefully this is something that's the right timing down. Yeah. Plus, um, Adam F. Goldberg. I think we have to use the F because there's another Adam Goldberg in Hollywood. Oh, Hollywood. that's yeah, right. That, you know, you <laughs> want to distinguish between the two. But Adam F. Goldberg, like his writing on – on the Goldbergs, I, I, I love that TV show. It's super funny. It it's really well written. It's super entertaining. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to watch it, it's a semi-autobiographical TV show, and you know him telling the story of himself growing up is super fun. Um, I think the the spinoff series didn't do very well. I think they spun it off into a series called School that only lasted School. like one season. And like what, one or two seasons? It was all right. Was it I two seasons? It. I I remember it watching one. Two, one yeah. um, I don't and remember. it was it was okay. It wasn't as good as the <laughs> Goldbergs was, but I mean, it was still fun for what it was. But yeah, I think his type of humor and his comedic timing work really well for something like The Muppets. So like you said, Larry, I'm. I think he's going to do really well with something like this. Yeah, and you know the 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 Muppets have so much to be explored. They have so many characters that you know we could be getting a, a Pigs in Space series. Like we could be getting Dude. like like all kinds of different stuff. So you know, taking this this is kind of like they're they're applying the the Star Wars thing to the Muppets. Let's take this niche group or this character. And we'll make a series out of it and we'll see where it goes. So, you know, I'm happy with that because the Muppets are very underused and uh, put them in every, put them in everything. That's put them in everything. I don't, that's, you know. Yeah. Mu but put Muppets in the Mandalorian. I'd be fine with it. Like, <laughs> Dude, it's coming. I mean, Kermit already has it's the. It's coming. We I mean, got Yoda. <laughs> so it's already, you know, it's fine. It's coming. <laughs> well, let's jump to the park for a moment. Because they did something really cool as you're walking into the park. Uh, Mel, you brought this to our attention. Do you want to talk a little bit about it? Yeah. This is really exciting because we have never seen anything like this. Floral Mickey, for once, becomes Floral Mini. And that's for Women's Month. And it is fantastic to see this. I mean, it's really, really cool when you see this, and it's just a really pleasant surprise, and it's awesome. Minnie is there, and she just, she's adorable, and um, I wish it could be there a little bit longer than a month. <laughs> I don't know how long it'll be there, but it looks great. It really, really does. Um, I got to see this. I think I sent you the picture about it was a couple of days ago so um I totally missed the news that it was going to be announced but when I had seen it posted I'm like oh, that's that's different that's cool that's that's a bow <laughs> it's a bow right there <laughs> and then you see the train, sta train station it's just beautiful and I love it <laughs> It was super cool when you brought it to our attention and you showed us mm -hmm. the photograph. It uh, Look, they make certain changes to the park that I think don't fit 
sometimes and we just kind of have to live with them but yeah i think this was super appropriate and it's super cute too it is uh, the way that they pulled it off i wish it wasn't as subtle as it was because i think so many people are used to seeing the mickey that it's really easy to miss that it's a mini yeah but once you know it you'll want to see it there more often like you said like it's almost like they need to make a companion piece yeah <laughs> Yeah, totally. I mean, 1955, July 17th, that's that's been mm-hmm. Mickey. So it's a huge moment for that now to be coming around to being Minnie now for this occasion. And, and the rightly so. What a great moment in what you could call Disneyland history. Yeah, and it's also behind that Disneyland history. The Disney Parks blog posted a um, the horticulture list specialist that was on it was Stacy Wise, and um, she was a team behind her that did the uh, design really early, like most of the horticulture was done late at night and early in the day. And she was pretty passionate about when she designed it. And it might sound like what we're talking about until you see it. It's kind of like one of those things like you really have to look. This is one of those Disney details. I think when you look at it, it speaks a volume. And I think for any g- young girl, maybe or maybe any even just older woman walking into the park, young adolescent female, just identifying with that to see that now probably is something that they've always wanted. Cause let's just, let's just be real. Everybody likes taking selfies. Yeah. These days, <laughs> and there's only so much time to take selfies with Minnie now in front of the park. I think that's, I think I'm with Melissa on this. I wish we knew, look, I get the, the reveal and all that. A little bit more time would have been great because, you know, so many people, I think, uh, would want to take a mini picture in front of the Disneyland Railroad. I mean, on the entry, it's just so cool. Was there, thinking back, I don't recall them posting anything about this change. Do you remember if they said they were going to do this? Because maybe that's what was missing, that because they didn't advertise it, people aren't necessarily looking for it. And maybe part of it is just the fact that that area tends to get pretty congested when a lot of people are taking photographs there. So maybe that's why they didn't do it. But it deserves an announcement and some hype because, like you said, Larry, this is Disney history, right? For the Mm -hmm. first time, they're switching Mickey out. So it's a pretty big deal. I don't know if it was announced. I I mean, for me, this is like the first time where I'm just like, I didn't hear anything. I you know how you would anticipate a change or yeah. know in advance? Mm, I I don't know. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it seems like the it was just March 1st. They're like, hey, it's uh, Women's History Month. We're going into it with a uh, bang, starting out with Minnie on the floral, you know. Um, it was just kind of like a surprise thing I think they were doing for for the month. Um, so who, here's hoping that it stays around at least for the month, if not longer, because it's, it gives people the opportunity to be able to, you know, get their photo with mini floral mini and, you know, see it in person because, you know, like it's, it's not hurting anybody. Keep floral mini there for a while. Right. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> it's great. It's a flower, you know, you got some bow flowers like or flower bow, you know, that's and they added some eyelashes like it's not like it's not hurt nobody. (laughs) Mickey and Minnie, very similar looking, you know, (laughs) right? The color they use, though, just didn't didn't really nice. Yeah, Yeah, it's yeah, it's great. It it looks fantastic. I have a picture up right now. I was trying to find a good video because they posted um, kind of like a a time lapse um, video plus interview kind of thing of uh, them switching it over from Mickey to Minnie. And, uh, yeah, it's it's great. Um, keep it around. Yeah. If you haven't seen the time lapse that Andrew's talking about, we'll post it in the blog post for the episode, podcateers.com slash 403. Uh, this is cool. I mean, I hope this is something that they do every year now, that it isn't just like a one-off thing, especially for Women's Month. I think it'll be a really nice way uh, for the park to celebrate it. Uh, amongst other things, obviously, but I think this is just one of the cool things that they've done or one of the coolest things that they've done to celebrate something like this. Uh, all right. Well, we're nearing the end of the podcast, but I wanted to bring up something kind of cool, actually, that I've been seeing on TikTok. I have to ask all of you, have you ever wanted a job so bad that you've done something crazy in order to get that employer's attention no but it's not crazy not employers. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't, I, I don't know about crazy <laughs> either. Yeah. Well, how about I, creative? Done, yeah, I've done something creative, but not like in the way that I would think where you're going with this. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's here's where I'm going. So uh, about a month and a half ago, I became aware of a user on TikTok by the name of Cowboy Jess. Uh, Cowboy Jess is a student in San Francisco at San Francisco State University. Her name is Jessie Placencia. And she is the uh, Animation Society president at her school. She says that she takes animation really, really seriously. And her dream job is to work at Pixar. Now, being a part of the Bay Area, obviously, Pixar is, you know, up in Emeryville. Very, fairly easy to get to, depending on where she lives, you know. And in order to get the attention of animators at Pixar, she has been chalk drawing characters from the Pixar universe on the sidewalk of the Pixar studio to the point where she has gotten a lot of attention. She's gotten a lot of media attention. She's gotten the attention of people within Pixar that come out like art directors are coming out and saying, Hey, this is really great. They give her advice. They give her some, you know, pointers. And now she's, she's applying for a job at Pixar. Now, I don't know where that stands at this point. Uh, I've been following her journey for the last month, month and a half now on TikTok. I'm hoping that at some point they give her a job because I got to tell you, her drawings are really good. And on her website, I went to her website. It's jessiespaintings.com if you want to check it out. But she's got a lot of character sketches. She's got uh, some animation tests and stuff like that. You know, I always hear about people doing these crazy things to get the attention of people that they want to work for. And this is just one of the coolest things because one, I mean, you're not hurting anybody, right? It's chalk. It's on a sidewalk. I think depending on where it was done, some people might see it as like, oh, it's horrible. You know, they're doing something bad. But the art is really good and it's right outside of the company that creates those characters. So one, I have to say kudos to Pixar because they didn't just say like, Hey, get off our lawn. You know, (laughs) they allow her to keep doing it and she's continuing to showcase her skills. But I really hope that this leads to some kind of internship or some kind of job with Pixar, because if you haven't seen them, I'll post a couple of the videos on the blog post, podcasters.com slash 404. But again, if you want to follow her on TikTok, uh, she goes by Cowboy Jess. And it's cool. I mean, she had an opportunity to tell a little bit of her story. Uh, I think her mom, from what I recall, uh, was it became like a ceramic painter. Like she would make ceramics. And she got invited, like she got so good that Pixar had like an on lot uh, kind of like farmer's market sort of situation thing. And her mom got invited to sell as part of the Pixar sale thing that they had. So she had gone to Pixar with her mom and she's always loved art. And now it's just kind of, you know, turning into this thing where she's trying to get a job. So am I rooting for her to get a job? Heck yeah, dude. That is super creative. That is one way to get your name out there. I love this story. Like, if this doesn't somehow end with her getting a job at Pixar, I will be sorely disappointed. Right? I mean, that and it just, it it inspires you because if the commitment, the passion she has behind that, I mean, for every artist out there that wants to be discovered, you would do anything. And that's one of them. So kudos to her for getting out there. It's almost like a happy ending kind of story where she's got one foot in. You know, that that's how you, that's all you need. Literally. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's all she needs. So good for her. That's awesome. Go get yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Pixar, you better be listening. <laughs> yeah, I'll send a message to Pete. <laughs> there you go. Oh, there if he hasn't go. blocked me yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't I don't I I know a Pete, but not the doctory of Pete's. Maybe one day. 
One day. You might need to get to know Frank and printing. Maybe, right? yeah. Frank, yep, Frank I gotta get, yeah. Printing. I gotta know Frank and printing first. <laughs> All right, well, that's where we're going to end the episode for today. We're going to end it on a high note. Follow your dreams. Do whatever you can. Be inspired and take these moments as a bit of inspiration for you know, doing the things that you love. You know, we if there's anything we've discovered, especially in the last two years, is that you don't have to be a slave to things that you hate. You definitely can find things that you love, and if you pivot them properly, you could be happy doing something like that for the rest of your life. So, Jesse, we applaud you. We think it's super cool. Good luck. We hope you get a job there super soon. So, yeah. That's it. Yes. That's going to wrap it up for this episode. So, until next time, keep dreaming, keep moving forward, and always remember to pass on the magic. Have a fantastic week, everyone. Bye. See ya. Don't whip it up. Turkey leg it up. Jimmy Chong it up. Go get your churro, March Madness! Boop, boop, boop. <laughs>